By now, you've probably all heard of Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and the blockchain. It's received a lot of press lately. Bitcoin. 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 It's all the rage, but what the hell is it? In this video, we'll go over how these new systems compare to regular currencies and also briefly look at how they work. I want to start off this video with something that happened recently. It's the clip of the Federal Reserve Chairwoman, Janet Yellen, getting grilled by Congress for the Federal Reserve being shady as usual. This kind of thing is normal, but in this situation, something unusual happens. Watch closely. Well, we don't have a lack of transparency. Um, you, you I appear... do if you can't audit it. It's a lack of transparency. So I regard the Federal Reserve as one of the most transparent central banks in the world. That, we that, that's explain... a statement. What, what... This is a great picture of the condition of the old monetary world versus the excitement of what could be the new monetary world. The blockchain and cryptocurrencies came in the wake of the frustration felt by the world after bad monetary policies from central banks like the Federal Reserve. Commercial banks and hedge funds also had a large part to play. There just had to be another way, a way where people had control over their own money again. All right, so to begin, what are cryptocurrencies? Broadly speaking, it is a form of currency that is built on a global digital distributed ledger called a blockchain. I'll get Luisa, whom I met at the St. Gallen Symposium in Switzerland, to explain, and then we'll break down the terms that she says a bit later. Well, my name is Luisa, and I work as research assistant at the Tax and Fiscal Law Department at the University of Graz in Austria. Um, the topic of my PhD is the taxation issues rising from the use of cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is, um, is a cryptocurrency. As I said, it's the most famous cryptocurrency. It's not the only one. Uh, but it's becoming uh, more and more popular. It was uh, invented in 2008 for, with the release of the white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto, which is the inventor, but it's still like unknown, so we don't really know who is this. The characteristic of this uh, cryptocurrency, so basically, if I have to do an analogy, um, maybe for people it's easier to understand it as, as a currency, so something that you use for paying services or goods, but it's very different because um, the first thing that seemed to my mind when finding Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. So it works um, with cryptography and in a network um, composed by um, different computers as nodes. And it's decentralized, meaning that there is no central bank or government behind or the, the currency or like in charge of um, the monetary policy of this currency. All the transactions happen and are verified through the network. Uh, every transaction is registered in a ledger, a public ledger, which you can find online, it's very easy to, to go through it, um, which is called a blockchain. Um, so all the transactions are, are recorded there and you can see it. Before we break things down, it's important to note that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and others are distinctly different from the digital fiat currency in your bank account. We'll take a look at the differences using Bitcoin as an example. Bitcoin, unlike regular currency, has a cap supply of 21 million coins. In this way, it's similar to gold, another finite resource that can be used as money. As time goes on, the Bitcoin can be divided up into smaller and smaller units as the economy grows. With traditional digital fiat currency, there is no telling how much money is circulating and no one knows if the central banks will decide to start printing more money. This can be a real problem depending on how you view economics. This is what I mean. There are two main schools of economics, the Austrian school and the Keynesian school. The Austrian school thinks that money printing is a silent robbery by inflation, as it makes us poorer because the more money there is, the less it's worth. The Keynesian school actually thinks inflation is a good thing. In our world, most of the central banks are run by Keynesians. And today, instead of focusing on GDP growth and wealth creation, they focus on inflation. They actually want a steady state inflation of 2% per year. In contrast, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are deflationary because there's a fixed amount making it worth more over time instead of less. So why are these new digital currencies called cryptocurrencies? Simply put, it's because they use a form of mathematics called cryptography. This allows participants in the system to have a unique address called a wallet, kind of like a bank account. Only the individual has access to their wallet. This personal digital address or wallet mathematically proves that money sent or received to this wallet is actually going to the right person. 
A wallet can be mathematically checked for accuracy, but can't be altered or tampered in any way. So what is a blockchain? In basic terms, a blockchain is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system. In this system, millions of computers agree on a global record of the history of all transactions that have ever taken place in the system. This global record is called a ledger. When you transfer some money or a service on the blockchain, everyone in the system knows about it. If it's easier, you can think of it like another peer-to-peer -peer service like LimeWire or Torrents, where instead of transferring files, you're transferring a transaction entry into a very long notepad of all transactions. And the notepad can be seen by everyone. Because there are millions of computers keeping track of all the transactions, this makes it impossible to cheat and create multiple fraudulent Bitcoins. The computers that are looking after the ledgers and keep the system running are called miners. They use their computers to solve complex problems of how the transactions should be put together. Each time a problem is solved, it's called a block, and each block holds 10 minutes worth of transactions and is put in a chain when it's completed, hence the name blockchain. The miners get rewarded in cryptocurrency for their efforts. This is how new Bitcoin is created. This is all modeled on how gold is mined out of the ground. Since the activity of mining actually costs electricity to do, Bitcoin is seen as an actual electronic unit of work by some analysts. We'll look at the blockchain in a future video, but this underlying technology will be one of the most influential inventions of this century. Some analysts such as Dan Tapscott are putting its significance above that of AI, hailing it as a second internet but much smarter. The technology likely to have the greatest impact on the next few decades has arrived. And it's not social media, it's not big data, it's not robotics, it's not even AI. And you'll be surprised to learn that it's the underlying technology of digital currencies like Bitcoin. It's called the blockchain. Block chain. To give you an idea, the Ethereum blockchain is theoretically capable of running entire companies and services like Airbnb automatically without human input while also automatically optimizing company performance. The blockchain also behaves as an automatic auditor and accuracy check throughout the whole system. It's just part of how the blockchain is designed. In this way, trust is actually built into the system. It all sounds crazy, but as far as I've looked into it, I think it will have an incredible impact on our world. I'll be getting Dr. Adrian McCullough, one of the world's leading experts in blockchain technology law, to talk with us in a future episode. Okay, so with that out of the way, what are some advantages of cryptocurrencies? Because cryptos are decentralized currency, no central entity regulates or controls it. There is no middleman, be it a bank, government, or any other company. With normal currencies, when you have a middleman, they usually aggregate power and aid in wealth inequality. This happens all the time today. For example, a lot of the wealth created goes to those closest to the financial industry, banks and those in the derivative markets, etc. Another advantage to being decentralized is that it's harder to hack. Banks and other centralized powers are an easy target for hackers and have been hacked in the past. The blockchain, on the other hand, is impossible to hack because to hack just one block, you must hack all the previous blocks in that system's history, plus all the millions of computers at the same time around the world. Impossible with today's technology. But you may be thinking, I've heard of Bitcoin being hacked on the news. The hacking was actually at the exchanges, websites where you can buy or sell cryptocurrencies. This was the interface between the blockchain and the normal internet. The actual blockchain has never been hacked. Another advantage is that there's a low barrier to entry. Anyone can join. You don't need a bank account or permission from a government or any other entity or even have to pay a fee. All you need is an internet connection and the software. This is great for a few reasons. It means that individuals in financially oppressed countries such as China and crisis countries such as Venezuela can get their money out without being tracked. In contrast, in today's currency system, it's hard to get your money out in these situations. For example, the Chinese government has been cracking down on capital flight, so worried investors in China are buying international property at any price just as a way to store their currency. Of course, this causes other problems like property bubbles in the countries that they're buying property. In addition to this, transferring cryptos internationally is faster than traditional methods, taking 10 minutes instead of days. 
because actually what is also positive about the blockchain uh, it's it's very um, efficient so in terms of costs and all the transaction the transactions are much faster than like if I want to send some money to you it will take from Europe to Australia I don't yeah, a couple of days, probably maybe one, two days. If you're very lucky and it works very well, there is just like 10 minutes. So of course it's it's much more efficient. So that's why also like commercial banks and financial institutions are exploring blockchain for other purposes. So there are all these discussions going on in FinTech. Another interesting advantage is because the blockchain is transparent and everyone in the system knows which transactions are going to what wallet, cryptocurrencies can help stop corruption in developing nations. So in conclusion, it's clear that blockchain-based currencies have some attractive advantages over our regular financial system. A lot of governments have taken interest and China has actually announced that they're going to be testing their own blockchain-based currency. I must add that I'm not a fan of a centralized government having control over a cryptocurrency. Many banks and companies are also implementing the blockchain. The city of Zug in Switzerland is actually implementing a blockchain-based ID system. And there's many, many more stories around the world of blockchain being implemented. With this all being said, this area is just so new that no one knows for sure what the downsides could be yet. Just as an example, Bitcoin may have failed due to some unforeseen problem, but I think eventually there's going to be a cryptocurrency that's going to get it right. Whether you think this is a good or bad thing, there's no denying that the blockchain and cryptocurrencies are definitely going to shake things up. This video was just a bit of a teaser of what's to come. I'll be hoping to do a lot more videos on this topic and go into more detail about what's happening with this revolution around the world. But before I go, I guess there's a lot of you that will be asking the question, should you invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Well, the answer depends on you. What are you actually looking for? Are you in it for the long term? Are you actually treating cryptocurrencies as a store of value in case of a crisis, much like gold? With this strategy, people usually just buy when the price goes down, but always accumulate more and never sell until years later when they want to get out. Another group of people are the speculators. Speculators are the ones that just want to make quick cash. This is probably the hardest strategy because cryptocurrencies are actually a real free market, not influenced by financial instruments. So it is going to be a wild ride. To do this successfully, you'd have to read all the news about the cryptocurrencies that you're investing in and know about the technical details such as hard forks. You'd really have to proceed with caution with this because people that don't know what they're doing are bound to buy and sell at the wrong time. Are you in another category where you're in a crisis country and just need some financial freedom? Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't tell you what category you belong to or how to invest, but I can leave some resources for you to get started in the description. But anyway, there'll be much more on the cautionary side of crypto investing when I speak to Dr. Adrian. We both agree that there is an element of hype here, and it's going to be like another dot-com era, where there'll be a frenzy of investing, a market crash, and only the real cryptocurrencies will survive, much like the Googles and Amazons of the dot-com era. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you found it interesting. This is a really hot space at the moment and I think we're really witnessing the beginning of something.